Who's who's leading this massive resistance? The truth is it's being led from the streets. This is being led by constituents, you know, at the grassroots level all over the country. And all the organizations that support it. this kind of stuff are scrambling to catch up. So, I, you know, at Move On, we've been – I've been – thinking since right after the election that this is the kind of confrontational moment that we would need if we were going to save the Affordable Care Act and stop the Trump agenda. But, you know, if I'm sitting at my computer, you know, sending emails, there's nothing I can do if people don't actually have this intrinsic hunger and desire to act, to show up and do this stuff. So at Move On, we set up Resistance Recess. Our friends at Indivisible uh, set up a, a guide to how to organize local constituent great, town halls. Great, great guide. We've been telling to, people yeah, all about it. Indivisibleguide.com. Indivisibleguide.com. And uh, there are now more than two dozen organizations that are, are working with Move On at Resistance Recess, sending people there, getting, getting, uh, getting the word out. But all of that is only happening because every organization in the country is flooded with messages from citizens saying, what can I do? How can I make a difference right now? We've been hearing it here. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's a real thing. You hear it everywhere. People do want to know where they can uh, plug in. You know? And uh, we talked a little earlier with Claire Foran from, from The Atlantic. You know, it's not like people. The, the, the White House is kind of they 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 want everybody to believe these are just the Democrats Democrats <laughs> paying <laughs> protesters to show up. There are two things wrong with that. Nobody's getting paid, so far as I know. And number two, the Democratic Party's on the sidelines with this. This is not a Democratic Party movement. That's totally true. You know, the, it's interesting. The the House and Senate Democrats now are starting to organize their own kind of town halls and rallies. On the 25th, or, uh, Bernie Sanders called for yes, his supporters right. to, to organize these events. He'll be doing an event in Kansas. But that's all, again, coming on the backside of the grassroots uprising. You know, that's right. that's the people leading and the leaders following. And, you know, not only is there no <laughs> payment going out to the protesters, no one could afford to pay this many people. It's, <laughs> right. a, it's a phenomenally dumb idea, especially coming from an administration that was so obsessed with the fact that it could turn out crowds at its rallies. I mean, you'd think that Donald Trump at this point would know <laughs> a crowd when he sees it. And these, frankly, are are as, as real and as angry crowds as you can get. People People come to these town halls and tell their personal stories about how you know, their spouses are dying, about how they couldn't afford health insurance until the Affordable Care Act was passed, how their family's been separated by the travel ban. Like, these are stories that you, you can't make up. And the power comes from the fact that people are feeling already the impact and the threat of this administration in their own lives. And that's what no amount of, you know, alternative facts and White House lies and spin can cover up, is when people know it in their gut because it's happening to them. That's what's fueling this movement. That's why we're going to win. Those stories are so compelling. We've heard so many of them, the people standing up and saying, and these are, again, not necessarily professional Democrats, right? They're just average Americans who are saying, look, you know, my husband or my, my wife and my, or me or something, uh, I've got coverage now. And this is what's going to happen if we lose Obamacare. And it's it's devastating to these families. And I think these Republicans may never realize it. And it, it seems to me it's already had an impact in that they were going to repeal Obamacare on day one. That's absolutely true. I remember I remember in December, like reading these stories, reading the reports coming out of the Republican caucus meetings. They had a plan. They were going to pass yeah, this bill. They yeah. passed before. They all the people, all the senators have voted for it before to repeal Obamacare. You know, throw start the start the fuse on tens of millions of people losing their health insurance, and had President Trump signing it into office on his first day mm -hmm. as president. Now they are in complete disarray. They are fleeing. They can't handle it. They cannot handle the the heat on this thing. They have no plan. They haven't come around. Uh, they haven't come together around any specific idea. All the ideas different people have put forward are dead on arrival because they would all involve ripping tens of millions health of people's health insurance away. And the irony of all this, to me is that when Republicans have railed against Obamacare, instead of admitting that what they want is to throw people off their insurance and just give a tax cut to the rich, they've kind of played to the crowd and made the arguments against Obamacare from the left, which is, you know, not enough people are covered. The out-of-pocket costs are too high. Those are all things that can be corrected by moving to single payer, you know, by moving <laughs> Obamacare right. to the left. Obama's, in his last week of office, he did a, a health care event, and he said, look, you know, all the critiques of Obamacare that it's not liberal enough I think Democrats would be happy to, you know, reform the system, correct these problems by moving it to the left. Republicans aren't willing to vote for any of the things their constituents would actually want. And that is why they painted themselves into a corner. And they are they deserve every one of the the boos and jeers and chants that they're getting because they have been playing a uh, a total confidence game with the American I people. I talked to a member yesterday who told me that it's interesting to watch because they went the first, first of all, we're going to repeal. And then it went to hmm 
Well, we better do more than that. We're going to repeal and replace. Well, then that, that sort of that sort of fell over. Then we're going to repeal and repair. And now a lot of them are starting to say, we're not going to repeal at all. We're just going to repair, <laughs> which gets back to what Obama was saying and Hillary was saying. There's some things you can fix about it. Like every major American program, you pass it and then you improve it over time. You know, one big theme that I keep seeing, right, when you talk about the resistance, you talk about the Affordable Care Act, you talk about all these things, is I think the progressives did get lazy. And I think that they were happy under Obama because Obama was a good guy and they believe that he had their best interest at heart. And it was clear to everybody that Hillary Clinton was going to win. So it was like, eh, you know, well, we'll, we'll get this all sorted out. But at least the Affordable Care Act is not going anywhere. It'll still be around. And things got very real very quickly for a lot of people who consider themselves to be on the side of the politics of, like, Obama or Hillary. And now that it's been ripped away in such a dramatic fashion, yeah, people are going to get pissed. Yeah, people I got to say, get really pissed. my prediction is that they will not repeal it. I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win this thing. I think that yeah. we're going to win because I, I think they, it's hard. I mean, to, even yeah. Trump says his idea for health care is I want everybody to have health care. Like when, when, like when he talks about it, he says, I want everyone to have health care. You know how that happens? Single payer. Single payer. Yeah. yeah. They're I mean, not well, going to yeah. repeal no, he, and replace with it. <laughs> it's in the past he has supported single payer. Yes. I, but, you know, don't be fooled. This administration, Trump... Donald Trump has moved this administration oh, yeah. so far oh, yeah. to the right. The yeah. old Donald Trump is unrecognizable yeah, yeah, at this yeah. point. He has not appointed yeah. a yeah. single person who no. represents even a tiny smidge of compromise with moderate Republicans, let alone Democrats. So this, you know, he is he is pulling hard to the right. Yeah. The thing is that Trump, all these Republicans, they because they you know had the the kind of corruption of thinking that nothing they did was actually going to have consequences. They've created a no-win scenario for themselves. I don't think that they have the nerve at this point to pull the well, let's pull the mandate off them to smash the the you know the face of the American people by repealing Obamacare. But if they don't, their base is going to be demoralized and furious because they're refusing to do the thing that they promised, promised to do, their to do. central promise. That means that their people don't turn out. And if they do repeal Obamacare, then everybody else is going to turn out in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I frankly, they've like endangered themselves from day one by promising this thing that they can't actually possibly bear to do.